Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer before the Bible study. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your goodness upon our lives. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people, leaders, workers, and members, and our invitees. Thank you for all of us who are here tonight. Asking, O oh Lord, that your word will enrich our lives in Jesus' name. That the Holy Spirit will breathe on the word. And the sweetness of the Spirit will be communicated to every heart in Jesus' name. Empower your people. Enlighten your people. And help us to behold great and wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Want to continue our study of the gospel according to St. Mark. We're in chapter 1. Already we have gone through verses 1 to 6. And tonight we're looking at verses 7 and 8. Please open your Bible as we read together. Mark chapter 1. Verse 7 and verse 8. And preached, that is, John preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me. The lashet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you. With the Holy Ghost. As John introduced the Lord Jesus Christ, who had not started his public ministry as yet, he started by saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, that he is, you have not seen him, he has not appeared unto you, he has not been manifested unto Israel publicly. But I know him, and I know he's coming after me, and he is mightier than I. When you think about what John has said, you'll see his humility and submission or submissiveness unto the Lord. Already he was a popular man, a popular minister, because many people came from Jerusalem, they came from Judea, they came from all over to be baptized of him in Jordan. And here he was talking about somebody they had not even known, they had not seen. And he said, he's coming after me, but he's mightier than I. And John was saying the truth because he knew, number one, the eternality of the Lord Jesus Christ. is being from everlasting. And he was born as a man into this world. And so he said, he's mightier than I. Not only that, here is uh, the second personality in the Godhead. And uh, he is just a man, a human being. And therefore he said, I know him. He's not an ordinary one. In fact, he's equal with the Father. Although he thought it not trouble to be equal with the Father, is making himself a servant, is mightier than I. Not only that, uh, the Holy Ghost had revealed to him that he was going to work great, great miracles. And you know, John did no miracle. He said, you've not seen anything. I'm just baptizing and I'm, uh, well, I'm kind of preaching whatever, uh, water baptism as well as repentance. But when he comes, he's mightier than I. He'll do miracles that you have never seen. Saying that I am a creature created by God. He is creator. And because he's creator, Creator King and his Creator Lord, his King of Kings and his Lord of Lords, obviously is mightier than I. Not only that, when he comes to this world, is going to make a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. I cannot sacrifice for any man's sin, and I do not have authority to forgive anyone, but this one that is coming is mightier than I. In fact, it's going to be the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And then he says, as he goes through his ministry, 
is going to provide salvation, is going to provide righteousness. He will die on the cross of Calvary. He will be buried. He will rise again the third day. That I cannot claim for myself is mightier than I am. And when he came into this world, the Almighty God said, The angels shall worship him, is mightier than I am. After his resurrection, he will appear to his own disciples, and then he will ascend directly into heaven. That will not happen to John the Baptist. And so he said, He is mightier than I. And eventually at the end of the age, at the end of this world, all the nations of the world will be gathered before the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Father has given him authority to judge all people and judge all things. It's by his word. It's by his authority. The people will get to heaven or they will miss heaven. If they don't believe in him, John said, I'm not like that. He is the final judge. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords is mightier than I. And then he says, I'm baptizing with water. But when he comes, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And as fire is greater than water, and as the Holy Ghost is greater than a what I am doing, therefore he's mightier than I. That was the introduction he gave to the Lord Jesus Christ as he was preaching. Their comments, one mightier than I, after me, after me. Actually, John was born about six months before the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the age of 30, he started his ministry. When he was 30, Jesus was only 29 and a half years in this world. He had not started his public ministry. And so John, starting his public ministry, six months before the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, he is coming. He is the Messiah. He is coming. He is the Lord of glory. He is coming. He is the Lamb of God. He is coming. He is the very Son of God. But you will be coming six months after me. And then he said, The lashet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. In those days, because of the dusty roads, in many of their towns and villages, there were sandals. And when you get into the house of a guest, and you are a guest in the house, and somebody will come and untie and unloose the lashes of the shoes, so that you leave the shoes there, and then you enter into the house, and the guest or the, the host over there will wash your feet. And normally, the people that were assigned to um, use the lashet of the shoes or the shoelace will be the lowest servant and the lowest slave in that uh, household. And he said, I'm not even worthy to be his servant or to be his slave. I am lower than the lowest of the slaves in the household. That's what he was saying when he said, There cometh one mightier than I. And is coming after me. And the lashet of his shoes I'm not worthy to strip down and unloose. And then he said, Why do I say that? It comes to verse 8 I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Uh, the fuller uh, thin statement of uh, John is recorded in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3. And you'll see the full statement of John the Baptist. We're looking at Matthew chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 11. It says, I indeed baptize so at water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He'll baptize you the Holy Ghost and with fire. He didn't stop there. You see, there's no full stop. After that word fire, there's a colon there. He continues in verse 12, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The same record is given to us in Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, reading from verse 16. 
John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. Each of those uh, ministers, each of those uh, gospel writers mentioned the same fact that he said he is coming and is mightier than I, is greater than I, is higher than I, is more glorious than I am. And then he says, that shit of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Again, Luke tells us, he didn't finish his sentence there. He went on to say, whose, whose fan is in his sand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, and the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Let's come back to Mark chapter 1, reading from verses 7 and 8. The topic tonight is the Baptist's introduction of the baptizer. The Baptist's introduction of the baptizer. Jesus is a baptizer in the Holy Ghost. And Jesus is the one that will empower the believer in the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the one that will send the comforter. It's the one that will send the paraclete. It's the one that will strengthen his own people who are saved, his people who are sanctified, and he mercies them in the power of the Holy Ghost. He's a baptizer. And now John, the Baptist who baptizes in water, is introducing the one who baptizes in the Holy Ghost. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the faithful recipients of the Holy Ghost. The faithful recipients of the Holy Ghost. The people that waited, the people that were faithful, the people that were obedient after they had been saved. And after the Lord had prayed for their sanctification, he told them to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost will be given to them for the power of the baptism. And that's number one, the faithful recipients of the Holy Ghost. Number two, the fruitful refinement of holy sanctified saints. The fire that comes with the Holy Ghost, because we are told, cloving tongues like us of fire, came upon each of them before they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That fire that came, that made them flaming ministers of the gospel, that fire that came, that made them revived, fervent preachers of the word of God, is a fruitful refinement of the holy sanctified saints. Point number three, the fearful retribution of hardened hypocritical sinners. The chaff that will be burnt or fire with unquenchable fire. The fearful retribution of hardened hypocritical sinners. Point number one, we're looking at the faithful recipients of the Holy Ghost. I'm reading from Mark chapter 1 verse 8. I indeed baptize you with water. I immerse you into the water. I dip you inside the water. I totally put you inside the water so that the water is all around you and the water covers you. But he that is coming, he shall baptize you. He shall immerse you. He shall dip you. He shall put you inside the Holy Ghost until the Holy Ghost will overwhelm you. The Holy Ghost will surround you. The Holy Ghost will saturate you. And the Holy Ghost will fill you up unto overflowing. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Look at what Jesus Christ himself said in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, we're reading from verses 4 and 5. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. This was so very important. It was that uh, the Holy Ghost was equipped them empower them the holy ghost was to strengthen them and so even though the gospel preaching was urgent even though the people were perishing yet he said don't go yet to jerusalem and don't go anywhere you must hurry 
you must wait you must not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith ye ye have heard of me for john to really baptize with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence jesus christ was repeating the same thing that john the baptist had said that john truly really baptized with water he immersed the people in water he dipped them in water but you my disciples ye saved ones and you sanctified ones and you faithful ones and you who have waited and you have remained with me until this time the days are coming and the days are coming very soon you'll be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence but why why were they to be baptized with the Holy Ghost? Not many days ends. Look at verse 8. But he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Underline the word, and ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, only then will you be witnesses and the purpose and the reason of being baptized in the Holy Ghost and having the power of the Holy Ghost is that you'll be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto all the most part of the earth. We're looking at chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Lord said the day was coming. It was a coming day. And John the Baptist had said that that time will come, that Jesus Christ will baptize them, will empower them, will strengthen them with that baptismal measure of the Holy Ghost. And now the day had come for them. And it says when the day of Pentecost was come, not just come, fully come, this was the due time. This was the appropriate time. And this was the time they were waiting for. This was the time that Joel the prophet had prophesied that the Holy Ghost will come upon them and the day had now arrived. I pray that your day will arrive. And I pray that this will be your day in Jesus' name. It says they were all with one accord in one place. Why? Because they are waiting as he has said. Why? Because they were obedient to his commandment when he told them to wait. Why? Because he had prayed for their sanctification and the unity he prayed for, that experience, no argument among them, no up and down, no disagreement, no opposition. They were all with one accord in one place they had forgiven each other they loved each other they were all together tied together in the love of the spirit and then he says in verse 2 and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire you know, you remember the promise in Matthew, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You remember the repetition of that promise in Luke, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And now that the day came, the day of their baptism in the Holy Ghost, it says, they appeared unto them clothing tongues like a of fire, and it sat on each of them. It sat on each of them. The baptism of the Ghost for everyone there. And the fire accompanied that baptism for everyone there. And then it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We're told in verse 15 of that same uh, chapter 2 of Acts, for these are not drunken, as she supposed, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by Joel the prophet. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, telling us that it's not just a speaking in tongues, which was the initial evidence of the coming of the Holy Ghost unto them. 
but it says number one when the holy ghost comes he'll bring power he'll bring boldness he'll bring authority and he'll bring uh, the the assurance and the strength of the spirit he also comes with revelation because when he comes he'll give them insight into the future and they will prophesy and they will see visions of what they need to do and they will dream dreams as well and on my servants and on my handmaidens i will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy we're told in verse 33 in verse 33 therefore being by the right hand of god exalted that jesus christ who is our savior who died on the cross jesus christ who by his blood has sanctified and purged and purified us is a reason and then is ascended to heaven is now at the right hand side of the almighty god exalted having received of the father the promise of the holy ghost he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear that he is uh, because jesus christ is exalted and jesus christ is high above he has god from the father the promise of the father the holy ghost and he shed that force upon them he has filled them and he has uh, poured the holy ghost upon them he has strengthened them and the power and the fire had come upon them and the people who saw them they could see the evidence and they could see the result of that baptism look at acts chapter 9 because uh, that had pouring continued and the power of the holy ghost continued as people were getting born again as they were being sanctified and they pressed on they were also baptized in the holy ghost we come to acts chapter 9 verse 9 we're looking at paul the apostle when he got converted it says in chapter 9 verse 9 and it was three days without sight and neither did each no drink that's paul the apostle he was salt he had met the Lord on the way to Damascus and he had been born again. The Lord had touched his life and changed his life. He had asked the question, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord directed him to go and wait in, uh, in Damascus. It will be revealed to him what he will do. And he obeyed. And while he obeyed, the Lord said, and then asked to him, look at uh, chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 11. It says, the Lord said unto him, unto Ananias arise and go into the street that is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus for behold he prays behold he prayed you remember the 120 in the upper room what were they doing they were praying according to the watch of the lord and in answer in response to what the lord jesus had told them they were waiting and praying they were tarrying and waiting and while they were tarrying and praying the holy ghost came on them and here we are told about saul of tarsus that he was praying neither eating nor drinking those three days look at verse 17 and ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said brother Saul brother Saul brother Saul already born again when he met the Lord and by this time now pray for those three days purged and purified and sanctified it says brother Saul the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest as sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost and be filled with the Holy Ghost was he filled with the Holy Ghost at that time of course yes that's what the Lord said and asked to go and do for him and we, we hear his testimony later when he said I speak in tongues more than you all we're coming to Acts chapter 10 Acts chapter 10, I read from verse 44. Acts chapter 10, we're reading from verse 44. It says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that had the word. The Holy Ghost fell on all them. The Holy Ghost was poured out upon all them, and they also had the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and day of the circumcision, 
which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also on the Gentiles also up until this time it had been upon the Jews and upon the Samaritans but now upon the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak of tongues and magnify God then answered Peter can any forbid water that these should not be baptized that's baptized in water which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we as well as we Jews as well as we apostles as well as we the early believers these two have received the same Holy Ghost baptism with the same evidence and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord and then prayed day him to tarry certain days let's come back to Mark chapter 1 Mark chapter 1 we're looking at verse 8 Mark chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 8 I indeed baptize you with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost has the Holy Ghost been operating before this time has the Holy Ghost been walking before this time of course yes you must remember that when Mary asked the question how shall this be since I know no man? The angel said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you and the power of the highest will come upon you. And so that holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. God. You must remember also when the angel spoke about John the Baptist, he said, It shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. You should remember that Elizabeth, the mother of John, as, uh, he came, as she came to the house of Mary, the Bible says the Holy Ghost uh, filled her. She was filled with the Holy Ghost. And when John was born, John the Baptist and the father was supposed to name uh, that child were told he was filled with the Holy Ghost and let us look a little about number one the past recipients that is before this time before the day of Pentecost the past recipients number two the premier recipients that is the people who came first on the day of Pentecost the premier recipients of the Holy Ghost as they were baptized in the Holy Ghost number three the present saint recipients number one the past number two the premier number three the present recipients as we look at the past the people of the past were not total strangers to the infilling and to the empowering and to the strengthening by the holy ghost we're coming to deuteronomy chapter 34 deuteronomy chapter 34 and i'm reading from verse 9 Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9 and Joshua the son of Nun was filled with the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses and there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses whom the Lord knew face to face in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent to with the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all into all his land and in all the mighty hand and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the land of Israel and so you understand that when we talk about the Holy Ghost working with ministers and the Holy Ghost working with believers, believers in the Word of God, we see the example of Moses. In fact, Moses had a desire as he looked forward to the time we're living now. We're looking at Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 29. 
Numbers chapter 11 verse 29 And Moses said unto him Enviest thou for my sake Would God that all the Lord's people Were prophets And that the Lord will put his spirit upon them Moses was looking ahead that she will not be the only one having the manifestation of the power of the Lord and the power of the Spirit. And he said, I would God, I pray to God, the time will come when all believers, all the people of God will be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will empower them. Look at 2 Kings chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. 2 Kings chapter 2. The past recipients of the Holy Ghost. The only thing is that in the Old Testament they did not speak with new tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, but they had the power, they had the insight, they had the vision, they had the prophecy, and they had the faith, and they had the miracles, and they had the signs and the wonders by the Holy Ghost. If it happened to them of the past, how about the people of today? How can people say they have the Holy Ghost today and there's no evidence and there's no difference between when they say they are baptized in the Holy Ghost and the time they say they are saved. There must be the power manifestation and there must be the practical manifestation. There must be the purposeful manifestation that somebody has got the power of the Holy Ghost, the vision of the Holy Ghost, and he has got the gifts and the grace of the Holy Ghost. We're looking at Second Kings chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 9. Second Kings chapter 2, reading from verse 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And you know the life of Elijah, that uh, mighty prophet in the Old Testament, that bold, courageous prophet of the Old Testament. If those people of olden days, if they had the Holy Ghost, and courage came to them, and power came to them, and they were able to do the will of God without backing down, backing out, or without being coward, and without uh, being intimidated by anyone or anything I about today. How can you claim, how can we claim we have the Holy Ghost, and we cannot see the boldness, the authority, and we cannot see the power to do the will and the work of God. Micah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 8. Micah chapter 3, we're looking at verse 8. In verse 8, Micah gives us his own testimony. He says in Micah chapter 3, verse 8, but truly, I am full of, the, of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. And so number one, we see the past recipients of the Holy Ghost. When they received the Holy Ghost in the past, there was manifestation and there was evidence and people could see and they could feel it too and they knew the difference between being filled with the spirit being a partaker of the of the influence of the spirit and then the times when they were just normal ordinary believers I but the people that received the holy ghost force after the promise had been given number two now is the premier recipients the premier recipient of the Holy Ghost. What were they to expect? What were they waiting for? When Jesus told them, wait in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. We're looking at John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 16. John chapter 14 verse 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. The Lord Jesus was talking to his own disciples and these immediate disciples, these premier receivers and uh, recipients of the Holy Ghost, the Lord said when he comes, he'll comfort you. 
you'll not be so sorrowful that you'll be hopeless but he'll bring words of comfort to you he'll be the comforter even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not neither knows him but she know him for he dwelleth with you and he shall be in you since you became born again he has been with you except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot see the kingdom of god and as the sanctification of the spirit you're saved you're sanctified is being with you but when you are baptized when you are immersed when you are dead when you are saturated when you are overwhelmed when it's poured upon you he will be in you look at verse 18 i will not leave you comfortless i will come unto you look at verse 26 in verse 26 it says for the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things that means whatever they had not known the holy ghost will come he'll be their teacher it's not just the speaking in tongues speaking in tongues when the holy ghost came upon them he began to teach them to teach them things they had not known it says he'll teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you and the you know the attitude or the habit of forget forgetfulness will be taken away they will remember the word of god chapter 15 verse 26 chapter 15 of john verse 26 but when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father he shall testify of me all the things you have not known about christ the deep things and the mysterious things and the great things that will empower your life that will give you assurance and that will make you to know how great your christ how great your savior how great your lord and master is he will reveal unto you we're coming to chapter uh, 16 and i'm reading from verse 7 uh, john chapter 16 reading from verse 7 it says in verse 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you it's profitable for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come I'm here now as your Savior and so he has not come to you as your strength man I'm here now as uh, the, your Redeemer he has not come to you as a comforter but when I am gone if I depart I will send him I will send him is a personality like Christ I will send him is the third personality in the Holy Ghost I will send him unto you and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin that is when you preach you'll not be superficial you'll be penetrating you'll be pungent and you'll be pointed because the Holy Ghost through you will reveal will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they, be, they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged I have yet I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now not just one thing not just two or three things I have many many things to say unto you but I've not revealed them to you you think you have known it all you think you know a lot but many things have not revealed unto you but how be it in verse 13 when he the spirit of truth has come it will guide you into all truth that's why they were waiting that's why they were praying that's why they were expecting because the holy ghost was to come to them and the power of the holy ghost and the great transforming influence of the holy ghost was to come upon them and will guide them into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he will show you things to come and let's come to acts chapter 4 verse 31 acts chapter 4 verse 31 
here it says and when they had preached the place was shaking when they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they speak the word of god with boldness that's the purpose that's the reason that was the expectation and that was the thing the lord told them which in Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high and when that power is come after the Holy Ghost has come upon you ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and I were told even after the initial evidence of the baptism in the Holy Ghost now as they preached as a whole church members and ministers they spoke the word of God with boldness verse 33 and with great power gave their apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all everywhere those apostles went everywhere those believers went they declared the gospel of salvation and the gospel of the grace of God and the gospel of the new covenant with power and with authority and many people turned unto the Lord first Corinthians chapter 12 first Corinthians chapter 12 the premier recipients of the Holy Ghost what happened to them what did they have and what did they demonstrate and what greater and further evidences came in their lives we're looking at first Corinthians chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with them for to one is given the spirit by the spirit the word of wisdom and unto another the word of knowledge by the same spirit and to another faith by the same spirit and to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit and to another the working of miracles and to another prophecy and to another discerning of spirits and to another diverse kinds of tongues and to another interpretation of tongues but all these workers that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will number one the past recipients of the influence of the strength of the power of the holy spirit number two the premier recipients of the holy spirit it is great influence and its great power number three now the present recipients those of us who are alive today and those of us who are part of the church today because the promise is also unto us it tells us in luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 46 luke chapter 24 verse 46 and said unto them thus it is written and does it behove christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem among all nations all nations and ye are witnesses of these things and behold i send the promise of my father upon you and remember the promise of that of the father was not only for them of the past is for the people of today as well because we're to preach repentance in all nations and the signs are supposed to follow us in all nations as we declare the word and the gospel of the lord even to the uttermost part of the earth and behold i spent send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high john chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 37 john chapter 7 reading from verse 37 it says in the last days that great day of the feast jesus cheered and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink 
any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. You remember the word of God, blessed are those that thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You remember the word of God, let him that heareth say, come, the spirit and the bride say, come, and whosoever is a thirst, let him come unto me and receive the water of life freely. We receive salvation to the present day, sanctification to the present day, and the Holy Ghost baptism to you to the present day. It says, if any man says, let him come unto me and drink, he that believeth on me to the present hour, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. But this speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. To date you, the Holy Ghost is available. And he, can, he will baptize us. He will baptize you in Jesus' name. The present recipients of the Holy Spirit, what happens to us? We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'm reading to you from verse, uh, from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen no ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them that love him there are people that still love god today and there are people who love god because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost we love god today because until christ comes until we leave this world thou shalt love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and there are things god has prepared for them that love him how are we going to know that look at verse 10 but God has revealed them unto us by spirit in the present hour, at the present age, and in the present day. The Lord reveals all those great things that eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, that have not entered into the hearts of men. God reveals them to us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Look at verse 13 which things also will speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches but with the holy ghost teaches we receive those things through the teaching of the holy ghost he becomes a teacher himself comparing spiritual things with spiritual second timothy chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 the present recipients of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. What does he do in our lives as we receive him today? Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Keep by the Holy Ghost the power to keep the Word of God and the power to preserve everything He has given us that comes through the help of the Holy Ghost. Jude chapter 1, Jude chapter 1, reading from verse 20. In Jude chapter 1, verse 20, it says, But she beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. For us not to be stagnant, for us not to be backward, for us not to uh, retrogress, for us not to go back, for us not to be like a pond of water that is thinking and staying at the same level all the time. We build up ourselves, we stir up ourselves, and we make progress by the Holy Ghost that dwells in us. We've seen the past recipients, we've seen the premier recipients, we've seen the present recipients of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost power. We're coming to point number two now, the fruitful refinement of holy sanctified saints. We're coming to Mark chapter 1. 
Mark chapter 1, I read from verse 8. Mark chapter 1, verse 8. I indeed baptize you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. As I told you earlier, Matthew gives us a fuller statement of what John actually said. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, and with fire, and with fire. We're coming to Luke chapter 3, reading from verse 16, that the full statement of John the Baptist is that he'll baptize us with the Holy Ghost and he'll baptize us with fire. We're coming to Luke chapter 3, reading from verse 16. John and such, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. The lashet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The question is, what's the purpose of that fire? And where is the evidence of that fire? Fire talks about being hot, being fervent, being zealous, being empowered, being passionate. You see, there are uh, things that are cold, and as they are cold, they're not useful. You bring uh, that meat or you bring that food out of the freezer, and it's very cold until the fire comes and heats it up. It's not edible. Or you find a person in life is sluggish, in life is lukewarm, in life is cold, and he cannot move, he cannot do what he ought to do, and the engine cannot and the engine cannot move until the firepower is penetrating into that engine. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke about the Laodicean church and he said, Because you are neither cold nor hot, but you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. They were dull and they were lukewarm, and it wasn't a satisfactory condition in the sight of the Lord. That's why he said, You'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Here it says in verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it, sat, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. That's the fulfillment of the prophet, prophecy and the promise. There appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it sat on each of them. But the question is, what will that fire do? Malachi chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 1. Malachi chapter 3, we're reading from verse 1. When the fire of the Holy Ghost came upon the people, there was a revival, there was a renewal, there was a refinement, a refinement of their lives to serve the Lord with passion, to serve the Lord with zeal. It says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. As you look at that verse 1, it says somebody is coming. 
and is my messenger and he will prepare the way before me that's talking about john the baptist and what's the comment and what's the uh, commentary of the scriptures concerning john the baptist because the lord said there's fire that comes with the holy ghost and that fire when it comes with the holy ghost and it comes upon the believer we'll see the evidence of that come to john john gospel according to saint john chapter 5 and we're looking at verse 33 and then verse 35 he is saying unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. Verse 35, it was a burning and a shining light. It was a burning and a shining light. That's a fire. That's what the fire does. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're filled with the fire, with the fervency, and with the flame, and with the passion of the Holy Ghost, it says it was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season and re to rejoice in his light. Come back to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 2. But who shall abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like uh, for he is like a refiner's fire and like the fuller's soap. A refiner's fire is a, ref is a fire to refine, is a fire to melt off all the dross and all the weights in our lives is the fire that will take all the chaff away from our lives and refine us and revive us and then it says in verse 3 and he shall see it as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness that's why that fire comes and when we become ministers of the gospel we need to be passionate we need to be fiery we need to be fervent and we need to be zealous it's not the zeal of the flesh it's the zeal that comes as we're baptized in the holy ghost and baptized in fire look at uh, psalm 104 psalm 104 i'm reading from verse 4 psalm 104 we're reading from verse 4 who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flaming fire that's what happens when you're baptized in the holy ghost baptized with the holy ghost and with fire you'll not be dull you'll not be lazy you'll not be laid back you'll not be indolent you'll not be slothful you'll not be cold you'll not be lukewarm you'll not be retarded and you'll not just stay in one place wanting to be at ease his ministers a flaming fire the fire of the holy ghost in your heart in your bones that you cannot hold back and you cannot trace you can you'll not say you know i have the holy ghost but i don't have the zeal i don't have the urge i don't have the passion to preach the word jeremiah chapter 20 and reading from verse 9 jeremiah chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 9 it says in verse 9 then said i said i will not make mention of him no speak any more in his name but his word was in my heart as a burning fire his word was in my heart as a burning fire when you're filled with the holy ghost when you're baptized with the holy ghost and with fire the word of god in you will be burning and it is shut up within you a burning fire shut up in my bones and i was weary with forbearing and i could not stay i could not hold back i could not hold on fervency came the power came it will be like the words of jesus christ when jesus spoke to the people and they said we felt it we felt the flame we felt the fire we felt the passion and we felt the burning within us luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 25 luke chapter 24 reading from verse 25 then he said unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken ought not christ 
to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself and then look at their testimony of the words of Christ the impact of the words of Christ in them look at verse 32 and he said one to another did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us in the way and while he opened to us the scriptures that's what the Holy Ghost fire does when we're filled and when we're saturated when we're empowered by the Holy Ghost and then we have the fire burning when we speak the word of God will become so fervent and the people you hear will not be dozing and sleeping on a message their heart will burn within them Romans chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 11 Romans chapter 12 verse 11 not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. That we ministers of the New Testament too, as we are baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, we become a flame of fire too. Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. Uh, verse uh, 7 it says and of the angels it says who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire his ministers a flame of fire if you're if you're tired with the weariness in your life you're tired with the lukewarmness in your life you're tired with the coldness in your life you're tired uh, with the uh, life that is not producing any fruit at all then come to the lord make sure you're saved make sure you're sanctified and make sure you're baptized in the holy ghost and with fire and you'll become a minister with a flame of fire in jesus name we're coming back to mark chapter one point number three now the fearful retribution of hardened hypocritical sinners we're coming to chapter one of mark and i'm reading from verses six from verses seven and eight in verse seven and preach saying there comes one mightier than i after me, the lashet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed baptize you with water, uh, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Let's see the fuller uh, statement from Matthew again. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. I read from verse 11. Matthew chapter 3. Reading from verse 11. I indeed baptize you with what unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Look at verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he shall thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the canon but he shall burn up the, the chaff with unquenchable fire you see fire at the end of verse 11 and you see fire at the end of verse 12 but the two types or kinds of fire they're different for verse 11 is the fire of the Holy Ghost upon the sanctified, baptized believer that gives him zeal, that gives him passion, that gives him excitement in preaching the word of God. But in the case, uh, as we come to the fire of, of verse 12, it is for the chaff to burn the chaff with unquenchable fire uh, let, let's go to verse 10 in verse 10 john has spoken about that kind of fire he says think and think not to say 
within yourself. We are Abraham, so we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. That's verse 9, verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is sealed down and cast into the fire. The fruitless tree of the chaff burnt with unquenchable everlasting fire. Luke chapter 3. In Luke chapter 3, reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 3, verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That fire is from the Holy Ghost. That fire is to purify. That fire is to refine. That fire is to make us zealous, make us passionate, and make us like flaming ministers. But now another kind of fire, verse 17, whose fire is in the sun. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner and the chaff, the chaff, the worthless material, the chaff, the useless, unprofitable entity, the chaff, he will burn with fire unquenchable. With fire unquenchable. Come back to verse 9 of that same chapter 3 of Luke. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree there, therefore which beareth not Fourth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. It's talking of the fire of judgment and it's talking of the retribution. It's talking of the recompense. It's talking of the fearful punishment of sinners in the final day. But why? Why? What have they done? What have they done? These are people who have neglected the Holy Spirit. These are people who have neglected the warnings of the Spirit and the drawings of the Spirit and they remain adamant in their sins and they remain rebellious and rejecting the word, bringing them to repentance by the preaching of the Holy Ghost. Because of that, it says they'll be cast off and they'll be like chaff, they'll be burnt with fire. Look at Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63, and I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was taught to be their enemy, and he fought against them. There were Jewish people that will not respond to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit that was sent to them, even in those olden days, they rebelled and they rejected and they refused the uh, pleading of the Spirit of God. And therefore, God became their judge. Look at Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 51. Acts chapter 7. Reading from verse 51, it says, uh, Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. You see, these were Jewish people, and as the Lord sent out his ministers and his preachers, the apostles, and they preached in the power of the Holy Ghost, they refused them. They were not just refusing the apostles, they were refusing the Holy Ghost. Who in whose power they were preaching. They were not just uh, refusing the preachers of that, uh, of the New Testament uh, message. They were refusing the Holy Ghost. And here it says, they did like their fathers, always resisting the Holy Ghost, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and the murderers is because of this that eventually the Lord will look at them and treat them like chaff 
and the judgment will come upon them eventually because the fire of judgment will burn the child the people who are pushed away the holy ghost and the people who have rejected the message of life that the holy ghost brought through those uh, preachers who are baptized in the holy ghost matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 we're reading here from verse 14 matthew chapter 13 reading from verse 14 it says in verse 40 therefore the tears are gathered as they as therefore the tears are gathered and bunch in the fire so shall it be in the end of the world what he referred to as chaff is now referred to as the tears and it says they are the bunch of fire the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend the child and them that do iniquity the child those who are not born again those who will not respond to the word that is preached in the power of the holy ghost and they shall cast them into a furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of tears then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears to hear let him hear i pray you'll have ears to hear look at the 47 verse 47 again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind which when it was full they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the goods into the vessels and cast the badge away cast the badge away does the child was less sinful unconverted hardened hypocritical he says so it shall be at the end of the world the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from the jaws the wheat from the child the wheat will be gathered into the Ghana, and the chaff will be burnt with unquenchable fire, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Come to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5, the chaff for the fire, the chaff, the worthless personalities for the fire i see a chapter 5 verse 24 it says in verse 24 therefore as the fire devours the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff so the root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Those are the people referred to as child. They cast away the law of the Lord and they despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. You see the consequence on them? Look at verse 14. Verse 14, therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices shall descend unto it i see at chapter 11 the chaff for the fire the worthless chaff for the fire in i say chapter 11 chapter 30 chapter 33 i see at chapter 33 i'm reading from verse 11 and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set a sign against the again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be led from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathos and from Cush and from Elam and from China and from Hamas and from the islands of, uh, of the sea sorry i'm reading chapter 11 that looks like an extra look look at chapter 33 chapter 33 i see at chapter 33 verse 11 he shall conceive child and shall bring forth trouble 
and your breasts as fire shall devour you. It's talking about the unbelievers. It's talking about the unrepentant. It's talking about the unprofitable in the kingdom. It's talking about the chaff. And it says they'll be born to a fire. Look at verse 12. The people shall be as bunnies of lime, and as stars cut up shall they be burnt in the fire here ye that are far off what i have done and ye that are near uh, that are near acknowledge my might verse 14 the sinners in zion are afraid the sinners in zion they have no reason to be sinful because they're in zion but they were in zion they were not hearing the word of god they were not obeying the word of god the sinners in zion the unconverted in zion the unrighteous in zion are afraid fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites who shall who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire who shall who among us shall dwell with the everlasting bunnies i pray you'll not be like that in jesus name but that means we shall respond to the holy ghost in ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 30, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, And grip not the Holy Spirit of God. He's calling you, and he's appealing to you, he's pleading with you, turn and repent and come to Christ. This is the day of salvation. Receive his word, and grip not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed to the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You will not resist the Holy Ghost. Hebrews chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 3, we're reading from verse 7. It says in verse 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says today, if ye will hear his voice, had he not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness, verse 12, take each brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You will not depart from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence fast to the very end. Today, the Holy Ghost is available for us. Those who are not saved, the Holy Ghost will assist you. The Holy Ghost will move you. The Holy Ghost will lead you. And you'll become born again in Jesus' name. You'll be born again in Jesus' name. John chapter 3, John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, I say, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except ye be born of water and of the Spirit, of the Spirit, ye, ye cannot enter into the kingdom of God. There is um, salvation and that salvation is made clear and made plain unto us by the holy ghost and as the holy ghost is pressing it upon you today and is drawing you today i pray you will not reject i pray you will not reject and then in first peter chapter 1 verse 2 first peter chapter 1 verse 2 elect according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctification of the spirit sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied the salvation and the holy ghost ministers that to us and there is sanctification the holy ghost ministers that to us and thank god there is the holy ghost baptism and the Holy Ghost will overshadow you, empower you, and strengthen you, and baptize you in Jesus' name. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Are you there? I said, are you there? Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He's available for salvation, is available for sanctification, is available and for empowerment, for strengthening, is available. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And days are the day of receiving blessings from the Lord, the blessings of His grace, and the blessings of His goodness, and the blessings of His gift. And everyone that will call, you receive, you will not go back home empty-handed in Jesus' name you will not resist the spirit you will not reject the spirit you will not pull back uh, from the pleading of the spirit but everything the spirit of god has for you for me for us it will bestow upon every one of us in jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer what we have learned today let's take it to the lord in prayer the holy ghost grants us his uh, gracious influence and he grants us is a gracious refinement it grants us the gracious empowerment and you can receive today saved yes you can be sanctified yes you can be and filled with the holy ghost and power you can be may you not go back home today empty-handed in jesus name
just a little while to linger here below. I'm getting ready to leave this world. 